Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. If this conduct is not impeachable, then nothing is. President Trump's impeachment trial is underway. Today, House managers are making their case, saying the president tried to use his power to cheat in the upcoming election. Good evening, I'm Lindsay Pena. And I'm Steve Atkinson. The Democrats, they now get 24 hours over three days to present their opening arguments. ABC Serena Marshall is on Capitol Hill with the showdown. Fresh off a nearly 13 hour at times heated debate, the Democratic managers returned to the Senate chamber with their evidence in hand, opening their case against the president. The president was the key player in the scheme. He personally asked the foreign government to investigate his opponent. These facts are not in dispute. Democrats say the evidence is clear. The president abused his power and obstructed Congress. The president's defense disagrees. We'll challenge uh, aggressively the case that they're putting forward based on what we're hearing. And we also have an affirmative case that we're going to make as well. Democrats still insist there is more to uncover. But their repeated attempts to subpoena witnesses and documents president before Trump today's opening statements Ukraine. failed. The amendment is tabled. The amendment is tabled. The amendment is tabled. That pivotal question over witnesses punted until both sides complete their opening statements. I don't see how any senator, Democrat or Republican, could sit on the floor and hear Adam Schiff and not demand witnesses and documents. Democrats are holding out hope that four Republican senators will vote across party lines to meet the simple majority threshold needed to subpoena witnesses. But other key Republicans already have their mind made up. They don't care what they destroy in the process of trying to destroy Donald Trump. I do care. So to my Democratic colleagues, you can say what you want about me, but I'm covering up nothing. As the trial unfolds, President Trump, 4,000 miles away in Davos, had impeachment on his mind, telling reporters he can do with or without witnesses. I can live either way. And all eyes will be on a group of moderate senators who have already proven to have some power in how this impeachment trial plays out. Republican Senator Susan Collins pushed for changes to allow existing evidence to be admitted, and the rules were revised. Rachel Scott, ABC News, Capitol Hill. And we have some breaking news out of Riverside County. Four people are dead after a small plane crashed and burst into flames. That plane went down around noon today near the Corona Municipal Airport. Officials say the plane was trying to take off when it hit a fence on the far end of the runway and flipped over. The airport is closed while crews continue to assess the damage. Both the FAA and the NTSB are investigating. There are new developments involving a San Diego contractor who admitted to stealing people's money and not doing the work. Team 10 first reported on the allegations against Stephen Haig two years ago. Today, he was led away in handcuffs. 10 News reporter Jennifer De La Cruz is joining us. And Jen, he was sentenced to one year in custody after pleading guilty to grand theft. That's right, Lindsay. He walked into the courtroom as a free man, but was hauled away in handcuffs. And as our Team 10 investigators are uncovering, the victims here may stretch all the way to Arizona. Team 10 investigator Adam Rakusin exposed this San Diego contractor back in 2018. Late last year, Stephen Hage pleaded guilty to three counts of grand theft and two counts of theft from an elder. What do you have to say to those families who are accusing you of taking their money and never doing any of the work? He was sentenced to one year in custody on those charges today. He didn't do start the work or do shoddy work. He didn't do anything for the majority of those victims. He just took their money signed a contract, made promises, and he was gone goodbye to the next person. While he was waiting for sentencing, a San Diegan now living in Arizona says that hasn't stopped Hage from working. He says Hage took his money and didn't finish the job. From the beginning, he came up with different excuses of why he couldn't get something done. Those accusations brought up in court today. Mr. McDonald contracted with the defendant um, and essentially got ripped off by him, giving him upwards of $6,500. He's continuing his conduct now in, in Yuma, Arizona. Prosecutors say total restitution to Hage's 22 San Diego victims is about $70,000. Today, he brought in a check that's not even close. Uh, they come to court with essentially $5,700 after uh, numerous months uh, really is, is insufficient. The defense arguing he's doing the best he can. Taking money from people and living this life of luxury, he's barely getting by. He has 
uh, four children that he's taking care of and providing for. The judge ordering Hage to 365 days in custody. After 30 days, Hage will be released to work furlough so he can earn money to pay back his victims. It will be up to Yuma County, Arizona, whether or not to press charges there. Meanwhile, Hage will have a review hearing to check on his progress coming up here in August. Reporting live in downtown, Jennifer Della Cruz, 10 News. Thank you, Jen. Police tracked down the driver suspected of a deadly hit and run thanks to help from the community. They released these surveillance photos of Christopher Nunez, which led to several tips. Police say he ran over Jason Gordon and dragged him about 100 feet, then took off. This happened Sunday morning on Market Street in Sherman Heights. Police say Nunez went to a taco shop on 25th Street and ordered food. The city's smart streetlights caught his path and vehicle information. 10 News spoke with his next door neighbor. If it happened, I'm sure it would have to have been an accident. And he wasn't aware of it. I'm 100% I'm sure of that. Police arrested Nunez at his home on Timothy Drive. Gordon was a husband and father of two one-year-old girls. A GoFundMe page has been started for his family. And roads are back open in a Southcrest neighborhood after a broken water pipe created a large sinkhole. The pipe burst yesterday afternoon in the middle of the intersection at 38th and Z Street. Crews had to shut off the water in that area. Service was finally restored to neighbors around 8 this morning and the pipe is fixed. A temporary asphalt patch was laid down over the hole. Now city crews will work to make permanent repairs to the road. It's unclear how long that will take. Right now, the Encinitas City Council is about to vote on a controversial plan to open a parking lot for homeless people to spend the night in their cars. Our 10 reporter Matt Boone joins us on this story. And Matt, the plan, it's received a lot of backlash from people who live in that area. Steve, a fair amount of people have already showed up for this 6 p.m. City Council meeting here in Encinitas. Now, that property you mentioned is actually located up on Saxony Road. Uh, we've been up there before. It's a largely resident or sorry, agricultural and educational property, but it does have a parking lot on it, and that's where they want to place this facility. It would be run by Jewish Family Service, which operates three of these already in San Diego. They allow people who live in their cars to have a safe place to park overnight as they work to get back on their feet. This particular space would allow for 25 cars to be on the property overnight. The program will also offer wraparound services to help homeless residents get medical help and connect them to job services. However, the idea of the program has received criticism from residents who are afraid of potential negative side effects. One woman we just spoke to said she feels the voice of residents has been ignored. I couldn't believe my ears. I couldn't believe that such a thing would happen without us being notified, without a vote, without anything. I mean, everything was done under the table, under the rug, behind closed doors. Now, advocates for the program say there is a clear need in North County for this type of operation. They also say that the population of people living in their cars is a unique subset of the homeless population. Many of them have only been recently homeless or it's their first time. Often women and families who have uh, resorted to this means of living to get by. Also, the funding for this program won't be coming from the city of Encinitas. It's actually a state grant, about a quarter of a million dollars that's been awarded to JFS in order to uh, be used for some sort of purposes like this. So they're hoping to be able to use those funds on this parking lot. Of course, that meeting starting at 6 o'clock tonight, and we will bring you those developments as they come. Reporting live in Encinitas, Matt Boone, 10 News. Matt, thank you. A 40-foot pepper tree came down on Pepper Drive in the Bostonia neighborhood. This is near El Cajon. This was just before 2 this afternoon. That tree didn't hit any people, cars or homes, but it did block both lanes of Pepper Drive. The appropriately named street as a lot of these trees lining its roadway. The ground was wet in the area and it appeared that that 40 foot trees roots just couldn't sustain its weight anymore. It finally gave way. Crews worked to clear the roadway and resume traffic down Pepper Drive. A woman was arrested after a brief standoff with police today in City Heights. CHP says they found that woman in a black Mercedes driving on the 5 South downtown with no license plate. They tried to pull her over, but the woman wouldn't stop. At one point, she got a flat tire but kept driving until she reached a home on Menlo Avenue. That's where she then barricaded herself in the car. SDPD showed up and helped pull her out. She was not following commands until she was forced out of the vehicle. Uh, uh, San Diego PD assisted with the uh, approach and the uh, removal of the driver from the vehicle and she's uh, in custody at this time. 
CHP said the woman had been driving with no driver's license for at least the last five years. All right, now to a health alert. The CDC says it is testing several people in the U.S. for the Wuhan coronavirus. The virus has now killed 17 people and sick in more than 500 others, most of them in China. But one case has been reported here in the U.S. As ABC's Marcy Gonzalez reports, new precautions are now being taken to stop the virus from spreading. The deadly coronavirus spreading now reaching the United States. The Centers for Disease Control confirming its first case. A man in his 30s who flew home to Seattle, Washington from Wuhan, China, where the outbreak began, now being treated in isolation. It's an evolving and uh, complex situation. In Asia, at least 17 deaths and more than 500 cases reported of the virus, which doctors know little about beyond its starting with cold-like symptoms. What we know is that it's spreading. What we don't know is incubation period. We don't really know the route of transmission. We don't know how contagious it is, and we certainly don't know the fatality rate yet. In Wuhan, warnings posted that public transportation will stop running tonight. The city going on lockdown in a massive effort to contain the virus's spread during this peak travel period, when 7 million Chinese tourists are expected to go abroad to celebrate the Lunar New Year. In the U.S., precautions expanding. Travelers from Wuhan now being screened in five airports, including Atlanta and Chicago. They just had a little sign that said, if you're coming from Wuhan, let us know. If you have a fever, let us know. President Trump saying he has full confidence in the ongoing efforts to keep the virus from spreading. We've already handled it very well. Uh, CDC has been terrific. And doctors near Seattle say the patient being treated there is listed in satisfactory condition. And the World Health Organization will meet again tomorrow to discuss whether to declare the coronavirus a public health emergency. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. In the last 30 minutes, we've learned that UC San Diego is trying to identify any students who may have been infected by the coronavirus. That's according to the Union Tribune. Today, the university sent a message to its students telling them to call Student Health Services if they were in Wuhan, China in the past two weeks and developed symptoms. Roughly 5,600 UCSD students are from China. Many just got back to campus from the start of the winter quarter. So far, no students are reported to have been infected by the virus.